whenever you're trying to improvise over changes, there's kind of the tendency of just noodling around, going inside the scale that you think that can fit all those chords. And there's a better way, and that is to start being aware of the chord tones you're starting to hit, you know, the target tones. A great way to approach that is just learning triads all over the guitar and being kind of obsessed with voice leading. But there's always the stuff that you can do that are so simple that will bring you into that awareness. Let's just take something super simple today. I'm not even going to talk about jazz progressions. I'm talking about the cheesiest, the most common, yet beautiful, let it be chords, right? If I record, the loop will sound like this. G, A minor. sliding into those or chromatic approach right kind of approaching them okay what about here half step below just being able to do that try that I know it's simple but So now I'm just gonna play the thirds. It's only gonna be tackling the thirds of each one of these chords, right? So, for that sake, on C we're gonna play an E, right? It's the third of that. On G we're gonna play a B, that's the third of that. On the A minor, we're gonna play that C note, and on F we're gonna play A. Then C gets an E, G gets a B, and then F gets an A, back to C. Okay, let's try that out. Three, Four. I can add some flavor, maybe I can add the five as well. So now I'm sliding into the area where, which I have all the triad, you know, so the entire triad. And I'm not just gonna go around and play just root triads, I'm gonna voice lead. But just root triads first. So root triad over here. Let's go higher in the guitar. That simple right it's super simple it's very cheesy sounding but it's the first step before you can start adding different stuff into those you know those progressions for example you can start adding just like a small movement into those triads for, you know let me explain that you know if, if you look at a triad this is C major in second version you always have the scale which is the key where that chord is coming from you always have that scale in there so you can start referring notes from that scale into that chord. Right, even if you're looking over here, the scale is still there. Over 
over here. So if you start creating ideas with the certain triads, changing them in time but referring some scale notes in there, you're going to get this kind of vibe. like I'm kind of combining the pentatonic scale within you know if, if I'm playing the C major I can see this C pentatonic over here the pentatonic scale gives in the in this this case gives me the root two three and the six and the five so I have one two three five six sitting over here so you can just practice that right if you go to this A minor over here, I mean, if the next chord is G, if you go to this chord over here, you, you can see that this E minor pentatonic kind of exists over here. Which is exactly like this G major pentatonic scale, so the G major pentatonic scale is going to have a root, second, third, fifth, and a sixth, all living inside this triad. Then you have A minor right th there, so you can play the A minor pentatonic. Which is gonna be the root, flat 3, 4, and a 5, and a 6 as well. So it's very good to have the pentatonic scales underneath those triads. So you can take, you know, any triad, like let's say just a C major, Try it over here and make sure that you have the pentatonic scale in your fingers. First inversion. Second inversion. And of course you can start, you know, making these into our actual arpeggios. Now another thing that you can start doing is adding chromatic approaches. For example, instead of just playing this, you can go root goes to the third goes to the root goes to the five enclosure to the third goes to the root, and you're getting you know and kind of a, like this interesting country or bebop kind of vibe in there. If you look at the next chord, G, you can also create that. Five goes to the third, enclosure to the root, goes to the five, for example. Now remember, you need to know when you're gonna change the target tone, right? Because the harmonic pulse is gonna be like C, G. So you need to aim there with your line, so that can be something like Third goes to the root. Now you're aiming in your mind, you're aiming to the next chord tone of G, this. So third goes to the root goes to the third of G. So that will be. Right, and you can use that as a motive between two chords. So you want to control your target tones, right? Third goes to the root goes to the third of G, maybe arpeggio. Now you're aiming, the next chord is going to be A minor. You can aim into the 5 of that A minor by going chromatic note to the 5th of A minor, A minor, and then you get this. You see? And then maybe on the F you can just go that tonic like... You know, just maybe like, you see this is F, I'm kind of going... Like that, and then sliding pentatonic that lives inside my F major. 
and then maybe can I can go to C, second inversion, and do like this embellishment of like, you know, G, maybe like these kind of like Hendrix stuff, right? And then play these passage in six, which can also be looked as like first inversion, F. E minor, D minor, C, or over here. So, you know, maybe like chromatics, G on the five, embellishing F, C second inversion, embellishment of this G, referring to the melody, maybe over here, just playing the triad, A minor triad, C passage. You see, I, I kind of prepared myself to go into this passage by playing this G. You see, this is a G line that I played, but I was intending landing on this. So as you can see, you know, there's many approaches, but everything, like the basic stuff, is that you want to get the sounds of the chords. So you want it always thinking ahead. It's like your your improvisation is, it can be based on the fundamentals, right? Which, by the way, you can check out in the Galactic Modern Guitar series, right? Where, where we go really deep into triads, arpeggios, voice leading, then it goes later into drop twos and arpeggios, but everything you learn there you want to start putting that into really simple songs and then into maybe more sophisticated like jazz standards and progressions. The thing that is, you know, that all of these styles have in common is the thinking ahead part, right? You're, you're kind of aiming into target notes. So even if you have like a voice leading part, you're, you can still use notes around that triad to kind of create a phrase that is leading to the next chord. You see, you're always thinking about Okay, I'm in C, let me play maybe a line like that is like, you know, chromatic because I want to go from a third to the root, but I'm thinking ahead like, oh, and I'm going to land on the third of that G, here we go, and maybe A minor, you know, I can create this maybe line going into A minor, and then, you know, so it's, it's always thinking ahead, utilizing these stuff. So that means that when you're practicing, sometimes it's very good to take a step back from playing in time and just like kind of go, hmm, okay, maybe if I know my triads and I want to start with this one, maybe I can create a phrase around that. But I want to aim to the next chord tone here, maybe G, so I can go, boo, boo, do, and then I have this result. Right, and then if I want to go to the next chord, A minor, Maybe I can go, you see, I, I knew that I want to land on the note from that chord. This is the five of A minor, but I kind of created like this bridge into that. You see, now you're getting a motive here. Now I'm just really just arpeggiating, right? But maybe on this G I can go, Right? What is that? Well, this is like the G major triad, and I'm going third goes to five, third to one. You you have all of these ideas in your mind more than you think, and you know you can also learn a lot of different ways of doing that by learning other people's solo. Like transcribing is the best way to get you know, a ton of those into your playing, so it becomes like muscle memory, automatic. But it's very important to understand the fundamentals which you're inviting all of this material into, which is basically, most of the time, just triads, voice leading. Even if you're gonna land not on an encore tone, like on a 9 or an 11, the awareness of where the triad is, is still really, really helpful, no matter what style you play, right? Now on the guitar, it's, it's, the, the visual aspects of the guitar are, are, are really challenging. So being able to understand you know, 
how triads are visualized on the, on the fretboard is, is a huge advantage to have as a rhythm guitarist, as a jazz soloist, no matter what style you play, country, everything is going to start making much more sense if you take the stuff I talked about in this lesson and start really take them this, you know, take them seriously. So you can have maybe a, you know, a tune of the week that you practice and your intention is like, okay, I'm going to, first of all, just maybe just play the roots like we did at the beginning. Then I'm just going to play the thirds. Then maybe I'm going to start inviting the fifths over there to play, you know, and, and then seeing how I can create some movements around the triad, you know, with the scale that is living within the triads. Then maybe start inviting those chromatic notes that we demonstrated, but always have the awareness when you solo where you're going with your line, right? It's like, again, you're playing, you're kind of imagining where you're going to hit the next note and target tone, you're creating a bridge and you're landing on the next target tone. So music is always a thing that is challenging to talk about, right? So it's just about practicing. So go ahead right now, pick up your guitar, you know, go over, maybe watch this lesson again and, and start understanding like what, the, you know, what do you understand from these stuff and how you can start applying that. And of course, if you have any question, you can feel free to ask me anything. If you haven't joined the Galactic Modern Guitar Series yet, you should definitely join because it's a really organized system that is going to, you know, from step by step, module by module, exercise by exercise, everything is tabbed and noted. It, you, you're going to get the full understanding of how all these things map out on the guitar and how you can start really taking that and finding your own unique voice through that. I've worked with hundreds of students and um, utilizing this Galactic Modern Guitar Series has tremendously helped them organize their practice sessions and it's just, um, you know, it's really, it's really, really working. So check it out uh, in the link in the description of this video. And um, that's it. Now, if you want to start diving into improvisational ideas, but over one static chord on this YouTube channel, I have a bunch of them. I have major, augmented um, and minor. So if you want to check out the minor one, which is really popular, you can check it out over here.